violent. I don't care how much those tinted spectrum slacks are off. I still like Violet Berlin. Indigo. It's just fucking purple, isn't it? It's purple behaving like the water boy's dad calling himself Roboito. Fuck off, Indigo. Blue. Skeletor scrotum's blue. Even when it's not cold. Have you ever thought about that? Everything on Skeletor is blue. His ball bag, his penis, and even his asshole looks like the underview of a nut on a blue balloon. Green. That has to be the colour of a lemming's pubes, hasn't it? Hasn't it? I've spent too much time thinking about filth already. Let's move on. Yellow. Because at the time, we didn't think that Coldplay could write anything sadder than this song. Oh well, you live you learn. Orange. For carrots. Carrots are orange. And tapered. For those of us who aren't ready to move on to the brutality of blood cucumbers. You don't need my help putting two and two together here. Red. Well, red. Red is for running on. Another physical release from the Megastyle folks. I know what you're thinking. Has this turned into the endless rubbing of Megastyle's clitoris channel or something? You, you weren't thinking that? Really? Well, I never said I was a good mind reader, so I'm not apologizing for that. God loves a trier. Rolling heroically on. Gear Strom's Reset 64 Craptastic 2020 competition entry Rainbow Edge Run has had its 4K ass dragged down to the gym, its veins pumped with roids, and its bench pressing twice its own body weight. So what does that look, sound, and play like? In all honesty, pretty good. I like the 4K version and it still sits high in the Book of Genesis Craptastic Competition leaderboard. I don't want to be repeating anything that I said in the 4K game review if I can help it, so if you haven't seen it, click on this link and we'll just wait here for you to get back. Caught up? Excellent. Let's strap on our running shoes and take it to the big red bit. Gameplay. A few things have been altered from the 4K version. The controls and responsiveness have remained intact, which were flawless. The big addition in the gameplay is these brand spanking new power-ups. There are four of them. Once the player steamrollers over the blue question mark block, they'll be treated to either a golden path, which gets rid of all the mines and leaves a nice straight line of gold coins for you, and it's a welcome relief from the heart palpitation the player gets as the game gets faster, which is something that remains from the earlier version. We may get a flying high bonus where we float above the rainbow and get muchos mas putos for collecting balloons. Sorry, I've been binge watching narco sorry we can also acquire a mind jammer which inflates our points and is the most likely way that those with a risk reward imbalance are going to get killed the final bonus and perhaps the most bizarre thing in a game that is already plenty removed from reality is the skull crusher bonus where you run along the rainbow smashing skulls with a baseball bat there's no rhyme or reason for this to be in the game at all Unless Dal Sim is running just ahead of us and his necklace is broke. Well, that's an abrupt 90 degree turn away from the cutie witchy game I thought I was playing. I'm not going to hate on it. I like the unpredictability of creative people. It's nice to be shaken loose from the preconceived notions I had. It's a departure that leaves you initially dazed. Your brain puts it into a pile labelled to be processed later. Like waking up and discovering you've been kidnapped by the raggy dolls. That shit needs time to sink in. 
Of course the point of all this is to get to the top of that high score table. Another new feature for the DX version, if you have the digital download like I have, it'll automatically store your name and your score and it will be there the next time you play the game. I don't think that it would be possible with a cassette version, but honestly, I don't know. Look at me, do I look like a person who knows how things work? Of course not. Another thing which has changed from the 4K original is the in-game music. As I recall, the original just had 4 or 5 note beeps endlessly looping, but changing tempo to match the increasing speed of the game, and while I didn't think that there was anything special about it, I did enjoy the effect it created. It encouraged a panic in the player, an anxiety which, while unpleasant, made the game more than just a dodge the objects affair. That music has been swapped out for something more cultured and pleasant to listen to, but while the music is definitely better, it has taken something out of the experience which I like being there. On the upside though, my high scores are much bigger now that I'm not freaking out at the 5 note loop, but I did prefer it. I'll come back to the music later, I have a lot to say about it. Not a lot has changed in the in-game graphics, but there is something I was pondering in the last video, and that was... Is this tilting rainbow effect actually working? And I have an answer for that now. Yes, yes it is. How did I come to that conclusion? One of my friends was playing this game with me and the constant shifting of the rainbow made her throw up. So I'm saying yes, yes the rainbow tilt works. I haven't thrown up as yet, but I didn't have a bottle of Prosecco to myself the day that happened. Other graphical changes include a warning flashing up whenever the action is ready to gear up and a decreasing bar indicating your power up is going to run out. Both very useful items. It now also includes a loading screen, title screen and instructions. Now, <coughs> kill the music a wee second. Kill the music for just a second. Now this is facetious as fuck and I know that. But it needs to be said. But let me just qualify it with this though. Roy Wedding, you know I love you, babe. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Look into my eyes You will see What you mean to me Search your heart Search your soul And when you find me there You'll search no more You don't tell me It's not worth trying for you can't tell me it's not worth dying for You know it's true Everything I do I do it for you Well, if that doesn't buy me any good grace with Rotteroy, I don't know what fucking will. Okay, time to get shitty. Who the fuck is this guy? That's not him. Who is this dude? I know who this guy is. We all went to school with him. He's the fella whose big brother had access to a dealer. This kid has been smashing the disco biscuits into him like skittles. He's tasting the rainbow. <laughs> This is PE class and this lad is running himself to death doing laps of the football pitch. Hey kids, winners don't do drugs. Although this guy did win the cross country race that day. He also adorns the cover art of the box and reappears in the game's title screen. Redrawn in Petsky graphics I believe. I believe that's what these are. Here he has lost quite a lot of his cuteness. And if you're looking at this thinking that this looks decent enough for Petsky, I agree with you. But I'm going to ruin that for you now. Sorry. Look at him hard for like two or three seconds. One, two, three. 
Does he not look like he's wearing the face that he has just cut off from another human being? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Shout at me in the comments below. The instruction screens are very nicely done. Nice, bright, vibrant graphics with the story controls and the other stuff laid bare before us. I'm a little disappointed with the story. When I consider how crazy and unhinged everything my eyeballs are absorbing is, I was expecting, maybe hoping, that it would be a scenario on par with that. But no, it's just a follow the path of coins for more treasure. What would Steven Spielberg have done with this? This is gold. Oh, oh, that's too dark. That's too dark. Shame on me. Shame on me. It is great to play with other people and share that experience of trying to stay on the healthy side of a heart attack while making noises like ah, ah. I have saved the best for last. Inside this game are some truly superb pieces of music. These aren't just good for the Commodore 64, and maybe I'm overstating this, but I'll take any shit that comes my way for it. Happily take it. And you know what? I might even defend myself on it, but I think that these are digital symphonies. The in-game music by Magnar Herstadt is great, but it lacks that danger wank impact that the 4K music gave the original. But it is still brilliant in-game tunage. For the want of a better term, Herstadt's Rainbow Edge run theme is delightful. Music evokes different things in all people, I understand that. And for me this is a montage of Johnny Five from Short Circuit. It's digital in both design and execution, but still manages to be enigmatic. The music which accompanies the loading screen is a long, dramatic, accumulating piece of work with heavy lean-ins to 80 sci-fi themes. Honest to fuck, if Anders Rodal records this with real instruments, I would blast the windows out of my car because I'd have the stereo cranked up so fucking high. Leo! Leo! Where are you little fella? Give this man what he deserves. All in, Rainbow Edge Run is a nice enhancement of a game that I already liked. Worth the £8 above what you would get from the free crap tactic competition game? Hmm. Uh, let me think. Okay. Yes. For me, yes. Aside from the moral obligation I carry on my shoulders and in my wallet to support people developing games on the C64, I'm still happy to pay the £8 for the cassette of this version. £10 or above? Nah, that would have been a harder decision. But for £8, I'm getting a good product for my money there, I think. The game retains that frantic sphincter troubling intensity that the original concept is built around, and with the challenge ever increasing as you get better and better at the game, this is a very good compensation for the lack of variety in an infinite runner game. I think this structure gives it as much longevity as you can expect for this style of game. And if you're interested in buying it, there's a link in the description below to the Phoenixware website where you can pre-order the cassette and there will also be links down there to Megastyle's itch.io page where you can download it. The Megastyle people have a few exciting products in development at the moment which I am excited about. It's worth following them on itch and on Twitter. And if you're in the mood for following people in a non-Ted Bundy way, you know what I would like you to do here. Well, that's all for this evening. Thank you very much for watching. Good night!